Well, good morning, friends. I hope that your week has started off well, and I wanted to take a few minutes and just uh, share some encouraging thoughts with you from Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 5 and 6. If you have your Bible, you can uh, open it and, and turn there and meditate on these things. But I've been thinking about how important it is for us to live moment by moment with a keen awareness that God is with me. Because you look around at what's going on in the world and and you sit there and you're like, you know, why is the Lord uh, allowing this? Uh, why is a good God, you know, we have these why questions, but why does a good God allow stuff like this to happen? And then, you know, as I'm maturing and growing, I kind of came to the place where, okay, well, I know, even though I don't understand the why, I know that God is going to use these things for good. And that's a lesson that we learned from Romans chapter 8, that all things work together for good. But what I've been having stirred up in my heart uh, over the last several days is this idea that we need to keep growing and remember that it's really, it's really not important that I understand the why, but that I understand that God is with me in all of these trials that we don't face anything alone, that there's no struggle, no pandemic, if you will, that I go through alone. And thank God for our fam family and friends and my extended church family. But listen, I, even deeper than that, we don't go through them alone because we have the, the divine presence of God living in us. So look at these two verses. Quite interesting. He says, in verse 5, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Now, I had thought of this phrase, you know, the Lord, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. But, um, and that's a wonderful thing to have floating in your head all the time, just to remember. But I didn't really realize the context until I started looking at it to uh, prepare for this devotional thought. And the devotional start th thought starts off in the scripture, will keep your life free from the love of money. Isn't it interesting that one of the things about this pandemic is that nobody can protect themselves from it. So you see rich people and sports stars and, you know, news commentators and money doesn't protect you from, from being exposed to this. No title, no position. Uh, even the prime minister of England uh, went through uh, a trial with the coronavirus. And uh, so, so we know that. But the scripture admonishes us not to love or to keep our lives free from the love of money. And I wonder about how much of our world system is all about the love of money. Um, we can easily be deceived into thinking that money is the solution to all of our problems. And that was my point earlier is that Man, you can be a billionaire, and if you get coronavirus, uh, it doesn't mean you're instantly free from all the problems. We um, need need to remember that money isn't the solution to all of our problems, but God is. And I think that's why the writer of Hebrews was saying, you know, keep your life free from the love of money. Because we tend to think that's the solution. And if you follow the stock market over the last month... Oh, your heart might sink if you're looking forward to retirement or you're retired and you're sitting there wondering, how are we going to make it? And you watch it go up and down like a roller coaster. And what is he saying? Don't let your life be entrapped by a preoccupation with money because money is a wonderful tool, but a horrible master. That's why we don't love it. Uh, it's not that money in itself is bad, right? He's, another scripture, he tells us, um, to, you know, be careful about the love of money. It's the root of evil, the, the love of it, not the money itself. And so what we need to remember is to try to practice having a light grip on things. 
that our security is not our uh, our investment account, our retirement account, our savings account, that our security isn't what we tend to think of as having it in possessions and homes and lands or real estate. Our security as the child of God is the Lord himself. I will never leave you nor forsake you follows the admonition not to have love of money, but he says, learn to be content. The apostle Paul said, uh, I can't remember the passage. He said, I've known what it is to abound and to be abased. Meaning I've known what it is to have more than enough and I've known what it is to be poor. But in all things, I've learned to be content. And contentment is a spiritual discipline that you and I need to learn. To realize that we are God's possession, that he is always going to take care of us, that he will never leave us, he will never forsake us because we're embedded in his son. We're hidden in Christ. Oh, our, our, all of our financial resources are about advancing the kingdom, proclaiming the coming of the king and realizing that we are only stewards. And so we become content with what God has provided for us. Sure, we may think, well, if I had this, I could do more. But why can we do this? Why do we learn this contentment? Because we know he's with us. I just want to emphasize this morning with you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus is our security, not possessions. Jesus is our security, not a 401k. Jesus is our security, not real estate holdings. Jesus is our security in all things. Then the verse 6 is a wonderful reminder because it's so we can confidently say. So this morning, I want you to confess with great confidence that you can say this, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. And so much more than just being our helper, he's life itself. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not fear. Yes, the temptation to fear will come with all of the uncertainty and we're wondering when, when are we going to be released? When are we going to be able to get out of the house? When are we going to be able to be with our family and our loved ones? When are we going to be able to meet again as a church body? I miss it so much. He says, "My the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. What can man do to me? Do you see it, friends? You and I are in the hand of God. We are in his sovereign hand and have his sovereign protection. So remember, as you go through the day, keep your life free from money because the love of money and the love of possessions is going to create greater and greater anxiety. Let money be a wonderful tool to advance the kingdom of God, but don't let it be your master. But learn to be content and realize that God is your provision today. And confidently say, mm, yes, Jesus, the Lord, is my helper. I will not fear. Hey, I hope this message is a blessing to you. Share it with someone else. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube or uh, iTunes, whatever you listen on and pass it on and let's get the good word out. I love you. Have a great week.